Assalamu alaikum. To those who are sending me message in my Facebook or asking me in the comments, how's my family in Gaza? Kumusta sila? What's the update? How's my father, my siblings, my brother and sister there? First of all, thank you for your concern, for your prayers and for asking. Please keep do, do, doing dua for them, prayers. You know, the truth is even me myself, Jan, if somebody is asking me how's my family in Gaza, I have no idea. I don't know what to say. I, got, I have no news more than one month. It's been one month since the last time I saw him online. It was November 13. And now it's already December 30. Yani remaining 13 days, it's already two months. Yani taqriban shaharin halan ma indi akhbar indhum, ma indi tawasal ma adri, yani ish sar indhum, halhum ma haywala ish. It's not that I'm expecting that they are gone, they are being killed already, or patay na sila, buhay pa ba sila, or ano. It's not that I'm expecting or I'm wishing. I'm just trying to prepare myself, yani, to teach my heart to be ready. Either someday I'm gonna receive a bad news or a good news. Just to teach my heart to be ready and decrease the little bit pain that I'm feeling. Whatever qadar that Allah wants, what, what, whatever destiny will happen. Ano man tadhana ng Diyos na tinuturuan ko lang maging ready yung puso ko at mabawasa yung sakit na ramdaman ko. And just like, you know, the other day when my mother messaged me, when I was listening to the voice message, the first words, like I was really nervous, I thought something happened already to my father. And of course, it's still a bad news. Why? He said my brother is contacting one of my cousin there that his brother is missing. And then for the first time I saw my cousin is online, I messaged him. It's true that your brother is missing. He said, yes. My cousin Ahmed is missing. He's still a young kid, yani 25 years old. Missing for more than 20 days now. And, you know, I only think of two reasons why he's missing. Either he's been bombed by this Zionist Israeli. Or second, maybe he's one of those that we saw in the picture, those hostage that they, they took. You know, the first time I saw the picture, I thought it was a picture from ISIS before. Because there's no different. What ISIS did to the Arabs in, from Syria and Iraq is the same picture that you will see that what this IDF did to the, to the civilian of Gaza to take them as a hostage. Even a woman, you will find it on the, the truck. She is with those guys. They took them as a hostage. You call them prisoner? No, they are also a hostage. Please bring him back. You know, since October 7 happened, I have totally, like, no idea what's happening that day. Like, those crazy people accusing me in the comment, like, I have something to do with this October 7. I was just with my classmate after the class. We went to the restaurant having a good day, you know. And when I went home, I messaged my father, how are you? He said, did you watch the news? I said, no. When I check out the news, you know, I was shocked. And I know something will happen after this. Something bad will happen after this. Why? You know, since I was a kid, my mother used to tell me, to educate me about to tell me that, you know, as Israeli, one Israeli life is so important. One Zionist life is so important for them. That if you touch one of them, at least, you know, not eye on an eye, but at least they will revenge to take maybe at least 10, 10 lives of Palestinian. That is like the minimum. That is what she used to tell me. It's like an example how, how important for them. So I, I, I'm not sure if this group knows about it. You know, so sorry to say, but me and my father are not any pro with this group. We have nothing to do. Yani I have a huge, big family there. I have many cousins, but I, I don't know even one of them who are member of this group. All of us are totally civilian, who has a yani, dream and plan in, in the future. You know, this October, they bombed, they killed my aunt. My aunt, the sister of my father, who also took care of me when I was a young kid. And, you know, they bombed the whole family inside their apartment. There are all like 13 members inside with my cousin, where her husband, her mother-in-law, father, all of them are 13 members. Most of them are children. And only one, my, one of my cousins survive. He's just young, 24 years old. They just have a plan, you know, dream to graduate, to finish. You know, one of my cousins who been killed was just graduated from college, who has a dream, but they cut all of those to him. You know, the, when the second day, I think of October, I think October 9, my father sent me a picture beside our house in Gaza. The building, there's a building beside our house was bombed that day. And when I post about it on Facebook, he said, son, this is the update. The next day, the, total, the, whole, the, bu the whole building was totally wiped out, gone. And he said, it's a miracle that they're still alive. Yes, it is by the dua, alhamdulillah, that they're still alive, the prayer. And after that 13 days, I have no contact with my father after that. I don't know what happened to them after that. Like, of course, those who have relatives in Gaza, you know how it felt like, how it feels like to have a family. I mean, you may ma pamilya don 
kung mangyayari lang, if this only happens to you, you will feel. You know, the last time I spoke with my siblings there, they asked me if I have the cup. It's written Casey because they used to watch it in my YouTube video. I said, yes, I still have three pieces. I was searching for it. I said, inshallah, I'm going to bring it in Gaza. So those, my old subscriber who bought like this, thank you so much. By the way, I'm not sure now if Kumbuay pa basila to receive this or what. You know, once they are gone, I'm going to paint this a red to remind me about their blood. You know, I'm suffering from too much pain now. Like, first of all, I'm suffering from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder and depression. When I, the last time I check up, it was after COVID. I'm realizing something not good is happening to me. And I'm not sure if I got it from my family or I got it from you know, the war I experienced in Gaza when I was living there when I was still, I was still young, it's until age of 10. Or I got it from the Philippines, because by the way, I am Filipino-Palestinian. My mother, she's half Filipino, and my father, he's a Palestinian from Gaza. I was born in Philippines, but I grew up in Gaza for almost seven years, and I was living there until 2002 when my mother bring us back to Philippines. I was just age of 10. I'm not sure if I got this PTSD also in, in this country. My beloved country, and I miss, I love this country, which is there's a beach, mountain. Most of the people are good. But some of the experience that I got, like discrimination and you know, I was 10 years old when somebody asked me, where are you from? I said, Gaza, uh, Palestine. He, she said, shame on you. You are killing Israeli. You, are, you have no shame. You are all bad. I said, come on. It's the opposite. That's why we left Gaza because of this. We are being killed there. We are being bombed day and night. So imagine this. A 10 years old kid, you will talk, you accuse him of this. Tamaba, a 10 year old kid, 10 years old Nabata, you will talk to him like this. I'm not sure if I got my PTSD from there. Two kinds of discrimination. Discrimination of being Palestinian Arab and discrimination of being a Muslim. This is what I experienced my whole, my whole life. For 14 years, I was in the Philippines. And until now, in the comment, if you understand Tagalog, by the way, because I used to speak only in Tagalog to educate him, if you go to my videos, you will find most comment from my proud Filipino fellows, most of them are how ignorant people, accusing me of being a member of Hamas. Asking me, blaming me why we attack, why I did the mess of October 7. What an idiot person. Like, I'm a and Rabbi. For 20 years, I have, need, I have not been back uh, to Gaza. Yani, imagine the pain that I'm suffering from that post-traumatic stress disorder. Second, this pain that uh, from people who are accusing me of, I have nothing to do with. Third is, I didn't yani, see my fam family for 20 years, since 2002. And my father, I didn't see him since 2006 when he graduated. We're supposed to be going back. Yeah. You know, he's a doctor, by the way. People think that my father is Mujahideen in Gaza. Even people here when they ask me, oh, your father, oh, your father is a doctor? I thought he's Mujahideen. This is how they look at us as a Gazawi. This is how they look at, they view us. That's why I'm just telling you that he's a PhD doctor. Yani, totally, all of us are civilian. So... That is what I'm suffering for. 20 years, imagine 20 years, family, how it feels like. You know, last, week, last year, June, my grandmother passed away. Allah yirhamha. She was expecting that I'm going to come to Gaza to visit. One year, I'm preparing all of this because I already got my Hawaii and everything. You know, supposed to be, we are going there this August. Supposed to be with, with my kid. That's why I'm just waiting for the Hawaii of my kid and to prepare everything so we can go there to Gaza. Supposed to be I'm going to spend maybe two, three months before I go back to Philippines for exit. And this is what happened. Yani, there is no like a future going back to Gaza anymore. That is the pain that I'm feeling. Fourth, the pain that, you know, I was expe expecting Khalas, I'm going to soon live in Gaza with my family, bring my kids there. I want them to grow up with the culture and the language and the religion, not to be like me that I, I lost everything when I was living far away. So I want them, to, I want us to be back. Like my grandfather was giving me a place in Gaza. And that's the problem. We are exactly living in the north also. That's why no more. The dream, everything is cut. I was even planning to finish my college there to continue my studies. There is no future now coming back to Gaza. That is all the, those pain that I'm feeling. You know, the last time when he was online, November 13, or before that, I think November 12, when he was online for two days only. Like I ask him everything that I will maybe will not know in the future. Like I ask him, are we originally from Gaza? He said no, for the first time to know about it. He said 150 years ago, our four forefathers are from, originally from Hebron, from Khalil, a town named Yatta. The time of Ottoman, they went 
to migrate in Gaza. You know, my the grandfather of my grandfather was born in Gaza. That's why we became Gazawi after that. So it's nice to hear that, Yani. I'm gonna pass it to my grandchildren about their lineage, where they came from, their grandfather came from. And like every message, me with between my father is like a last message, you know. It felt like, bawat mensahe ko sa tatay ko, mensahe namin sa isa't isa, is parang farewell, parang pagpapaalam, parang huling mensahe na namin sa isa't isa. And now, while I'm doing this video, December 31, I think December 30 now, or in tomorrow it's already 2024, January 1. Until now, I have no news to my, from my father since November 13. May Allah guide them, may Allah help them. Especially my family are living in the north. Yes, most all of them are already evacuate. what I know. They already moved south, but there is no safe, I told you. Even the south, some Filipina who are living in the south, their house was bombed, they told me. What else except to put the trust in Allah? Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiun. From Allah we came, from Allah we will go back. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is enough for us in Sufi, the, the, the disposal of all affair. Remember Akhira, after life after death. Just remember the hereafter. That after this world, after we die, all of us, inshallah, in the day of their judgment, the justice will be there. The real justice will be in the hereafter, where the Lord of the whole universe, the King of all kings, will stand in front of us and will question every people have to do with this. Every people who have done this, just be prepare yourself to those who are silent, to those who are who who have the power, who did nothing. Don't be afraid of me or to anyone else. Just be afraid of you, the one who created you, the one who give you eyes that you can see me now, that the one who give you ear that you can hear hear me now. Just be don't don't be afraid of anyone of Sheikh or anyone. Just be afraid to the Lord of the universe, Rabbul Alamin, who will question you in the day of judgment. For you did nothing, seeing your brother and sister in Gaza, in Palestine, for 75 years being oppressed. Just remember what you will say to Allah if He asks you about us. Anong sasagot mo sa harap ng Allah? Of course, He will not ask those people who has nothing to do, but of course those who have power, those who can do something. Thank you for your concern. Even some of my Christian followers telling me to do video about when October 7 happened, somebody, a good follower, a Christian guy who said, please do video about this, uh, what is happening and you want to understand, we are just concerned. I hope all people are like him. True Christian who is having a heart, humanity heart, yani. Sana lahat katulad niya. And until now, I cannot do videos for two months, I cannot focus. And I told you why I cannot focus. موطني موطني